Hello everybody! In this Python tutorial we're going to go over the basics of working with fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is import the fractions module. The next thing we're going to do is create a simple fraction. So let's go ahead and create a variable. We'll call this fraction 1. And here we're going to access the fractions module. And then we're going to use a dot to access fraction with a capital letter. Then we're going to create some round brackets, and inside our round brackets, let's go ahead and put our numerator and denominator. So this is the fraction of one half. So if we go ahead and use a print statement to display this, we should get one half. Select it and run it, and you can see over here in the console, we get one half. Okay, so for our first example of working with the fractions, we want to add one half plus one fourth. So let's delete this print statement here and create another fraction. We'll call this fraction two. We've already created fraction one with the fraction of one half and the second fraction will be one fourth. So let's create a third variable called fraction three and let's make this fraction one plus fraction two. Fraction one plus fraction two. Now let's go ahead and use a print to display the answer. Select our code and run it. And if we've set this up correctly, the check for the answer is 3 fourths, so we should get back 3 fourths. You can see over here in the console we get 3 fourths. We should be good to go. Now another thing, if you wanted to see this answer as a decimal, let's go ahead and put float in front of our variable and cast this as a float. Now when we select this code and run it, we should get back 0.75. And we get back 0.75, that's good. Okay, so for our next example, let's add negative 11 fifths plus 12 eighths. So let's change our first fraction one to negative 11 fifths, and let's change our second fraction to 12 eighths. Okay, and fraction three is still adding these two together. So if we select our code now and run it, we should get back negative 7 tenths. Okay, we get back negative 0.7, which is the same thing as negative 7 tenths. So let's go over here to our print and get rid of that float. Select it again, and now we should get back negative 7 tenths. Okay, and we do, we're good to go. For our next example, let's do a subtraction. So let's do 12 fifths minus 1 half. So let's go up to our first fraction, change this to a 12, and the denominator is already good, so we have 12 fifths. For our second fraction, we want 1 half, so let's change that to 1 half. Let's change the sign for our fraction 3 to subtraction. We should get back 19 over 10. Let's go ahead and run it, and we get back 19 over 10. It's good. For our next example, let's do a multiplication. So in this case, let's multiply 1 fourth by 2 fifths. Change our fraction to 1 fourth. 2 over 5. Change our sign to multiplication. We select this and run it. We should get back. Our check answer says 1 over 10. Let's run it and see what we get. And we get 1 over 10. So for our next example, let's do some division. Let's divide 12 over 33 by 4 over 39. Let's change our sign to division. Select our code and run it. And for this answer, we should get back 39 over 11. And we get back the expected answer, 39 over 11. Okay, so for our next example, if at any time you ever need to work with just the numerator or the denominator of a fraction, you can do that. So let's go over how to do that. So let's create a new variable called fraction 4. And let's just keep this real simple. Let's make this 1 fourth. Okay, so let's use a print to display to show you that if you want to access just the numerator from this fraction, there's a way to do that. So let's call up fraction four, and then we're gonna use a dot to access the numerator. And when we select this and run it, we should get back just the numerator, which is one. Okay, we get back one. 
Now you can do the same thing with the denominator. So again, just use a dot to access the denominator. Now when we select this and run it, we should get back just the denominator, which is four. Okay, we get back four. Now one thing to note on this, oftentimes if you have a fraction that can be reduced, this will return the numerator and denominator in reduced form. Okay, so if you get something back that you don't expect, that's probably because it's been reduced already for you, okay? Okay, so let's move on to our next example. And this is called limit denominator because we're gonna use a function called limit denominator. And we'll show you when and why you might wanna use this. So here we have a list of three numbers, one, one half, and one fourth. We have created an average for these three numbers. Then we have created a variable called average fraction. So this is the average of the numbers in the list in fraction form. And if we select this code and run it, you can see over here in the console that you get a fraction back that is not very friendly to look at. Now one way to remedy this is to use the limit denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. So right here, for our average fraction variable, we've accessed the fractions module, we've used a dot to access the fraction, and then we put our average inside the round brackets. Now after the last round bracket here, if we use a dot, and we start to type in limit denominator, and then we use the round brackets to use this as a function. So now if we select all this code and run it, we should get back something that looks a little bit more like the fraction that you would expect from the average of these three numbers. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get back 7 twelfths. And this 7 twelfths should be more along the lines of what you would expect. So for example, if you took the average of these three numbers and put them into Wolfram Alpha or something like that, you would get back 7 twelfths. Okay, so that's all we have for this tutorial on the basics of working with fractions in Python. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Please join us for those, and we'll see you next time.